the record button and the brightness down a little bit. Did Akai just buy Moog? No, silly, but you don't know who InMusic is, so that's kind of how I had to break it down for you. So InMusic owns Akai, Alesis, Air Technology, uh, some DJ things like Dinon DJ and a few other things, but now they own Moog. Like, what? Moog. Okay, so if you're not a Moog fan, What's wrong with you? Like, I don't understand how anyone can hate on a Moog synthesizer. Every single Moog that I've had in the studio, and I kind of want to say Moog just to like piss people off, but no, it's Moog. It's actually Moog. Has sounded amazing, like zero complaints. The grandmother, the mother 32. My first mono synth was actually the Slim Fatty, which was like such a growler, like that synthesizer. Just that Moog sound, like how can you not like Moog? So seeing that Akai has been releasing plugins and that they released a Moog-like plugin makes me wonder like what else they're planning to do. So the last thing that Moog released was the Mavis. And prior to that, a few years back, Moog had released this crazy expensive synthesizer, the Moog One. So the price actually went up on the Moog One. It came out at $599 for the 8 voice and $799 for the 16 voice. So a very expensive synthesizer that very few people had. And even the ones that had them, you saw them use on reverb a lot because there were a few people that were like, this is the synthesizer of my dreams. Like, this is what I've been waiting for. Like, I'm gonna sell all my gear and get this Moog One. I've been in that situation, but not with the Moog One, like with the Prophet 6, that was my, my situation like years ago that I sold like all my Volcas and all my small gear and then I regretted it. So you saw a lot of used Moog Ones and then this thing is massive. So like that person is already taking a huge L in shipping alone, like over a hundred, two hundred dollars, probably more because you definitely want to get that thing insured. But anyways, just it was a huge L of a synth because there was no market for it. I don't think I saw this even in like big recording artist studios. And I played with one at Tolman Synth Reactor and it was just a lot, like it was just a lot of synth. And to be honest with you, it did not sound like as good as a Prophet 6, like right away. I had heard some demos of people doing like amazing things on it, but the menu diving, like the UI was not right. It had a tiny little screen, like it just wasn't it. So I think the success of the Moog One was not what they were expecting. I don't remember if the Matriarch came before the One or after the One, but that's Moog's other polyphonic synth. It's not really polyphonic, like there's some catch to it. But with so many other companies getting into the synth game and just creating those classic analog waves, with Behringer cloning all their synths and selling them for really cheap, they just cloned the three tire, the Moog rack. So that's gonna be available. Moog had been talking about getting into a cheaper market and that was what they were doing with the release of the Mavis. That was like the last thing they released. I'm not sure how well Moog is doing to be honest because if you go to any website a lot of their stuff is on sale. So I don't know if this means that maybe we're going to see like a lot of new products coming out. So hey maybe that's exciting. I'm really excited actually to see what they're going to do. Imagine like the power of a Moog synthesizer with like the workflow. Who's screaming out there? Workflow of the MPC or something like that. Like something crazy like that. Like a synthesizer with a screen and other stuff. Okay, okay, I'm listening, I'm listening. But I wonder what Bob Moog would have thought about this being sold to Akai or in music. Okay, I'm sorry. So I don't know if Moog was like about to die because they hadn't really released anything since the Mavis and they've kind of been quiet. So I really hope that this means we're about to see like a lot of cool new products with in music and Moog. Like I really hope that like they save Moog. And that's kind of crazy to say because like Moog was really up there. And I mean, I don't feel like it's Moog's fault. I feel like everyone like it's a recession <laughs> like everybody broke so they had been looking for a buyer for some time but i read that it wasn't really for financial reasons although we you know we don't know they were looking for a buyer not so much for a financial standpoint according to them but more to like keep the company going and like innovate and connect with a company that is going to make them succeed more so what do you guys think about this merge let me know below there was also a merge with native instruments and isotope isotope is now owned by native instruments not sure if you caught that one but what is going on there does this mean that now we're just going to see soft Software from Native Instruments. You guys let me know. I still have my fingers crossed for the machine MK4, battery powered, a faster processor. But to be honest with you guys, I've been in my DAW a lot lately. Um, I was finally recording some vocals yesterday. It's been a minute just messing around. So, you know, I'm excited that I'm getting back into making music. So that's it for today. Stay fly and I'll catch you in the next one.